All right, we are headed to part C of this Kepler's Laws gizmo now. Remember, we skipped A, you've already completed B, and now we are on to C. So make sure you have that simulation loaded up. Again, it's orbital motion, Kepler's Laws. And uh, since we're jumping right in at C here, make sure you have some things clicked here. One of them is you gotta set the sun mass to medium. And then you have to have on show grid and show trails is good too, just so you can see the orbit. All right, so sun mass needs to become medium. In other words, this is going to be for uh, something bigger than our sun, twice as big as a matter of fact. And we get going here. This is for the intro. It says Kepler's last law relates the period of a planet. Remember, that's the time to go around once to the radius. The radius, remember, is the average distance to the sun. That was in AUs. So prediction here first. How do you expect the period of a planet to change as its average distance from the sun increases? All right, so in other words, it, if you increase the AUs, that's the average distance from the sun. I'm just going to leave a little blank here. Do you expect the period, which is that T, to go up or down? Okay, so take your guess. I think Ms. Klein usually pauses me to talk about your guesses. All right. So you move that planet to negative 4. Remember, I is really just like X. And get the closest you can get. I think mine is at negative 4.01, which is fine. Then drag that purple velocity vector arrow down to negative 15. Just as close as you can get. And mine is negative 15. I don't know. Wake up here. Negative 15.1. All right. So you're going to click play. And I already started filling mine out here, but I want to make sure you can see your answers may not be exactly like mine. Here, okay. I'm going to use a paper towel to cover some of this up here. Um, that's how you know you're not at school anymore. Um, so negative 4, negative 15. You want to pause it right when it completes one orbit, which is why it's easiest if you have show trails on. So you click play. And it doesn't go real fast. You can probably tell your partner, table partner, a story while you're waiting. And just pause me if necessary. And click stop or pause, whatever it is, just as soon as it gets around. And the period is called time on your simulation. It's underneath the play and pause button. So mine was 3,010 days. Okay, 3,010. Now the next thing you do, select the table tab and click record data. Okay, so over towards the right, you click table. And then the left button under that, left to bottom, says record data. What is the actual period of the planet in Earth days and years? Because this 3,010 days, that's in the world of that planet. If we want to use a 24-hour day, then it's 3,014 Earth days for mine, which is 8.258 years. No fancy schmancy calculating there. It just gives you the answers. All right, orbital radius of the planet. I didn't want to write this one down. I want to make sure you're looking at your table, but you should see it. It's the lowercase a with the AUs under it. That is going to be the radius of the planet. So if yours happened to say 6, which it should not say 6, but if it did say 6, that would mean it's 6 times farther from the sun on average than we are. If it said 5, it's 5 times farther from the sun on average than we are. Next one, now you just change your radius. So you change your radius to negative 2, you grab that purple velocity vector, and you drag it to negative 20. Hopefully you saw the reset. Sorry about that. Click reset. So negative 2, negative 20 for the velocity, click play, you're going to have a new period. Get the period in days and years, get it off of the table. Okay, so we get play, we record data. You want to record the data because if you don't, you won't get a graph here at the end and you'll have to uh, go back through. So make sure you always record your data. New orbital radius, you can see it on the table. And then now you should hopefully have a conclusion here because our radius got smaller. So it would be something like this. If the radius 
decreases the period, and then you've got to say what you saw there. So the period did what since we went from 4 AUs away down to 2 AUs away? Down here, <clears throat> you're going to experiment with it, and uh, I would just clear this thing out, so reset the whole darn thing, and you're going to pick your own, but you're going to start small, start with the absolute smallest radius, which you will end up recording here, and then work your way out. So maybe you put it at negative 1, don't write negative 1, but set it, your planet at negative 1, hit play, and then look at your table. It'll give you these. And I'm going to guess Miss Klein may start this with you to make sure you do it correctly. So get bigger and bigger and bigger. You'll end up having to zoom in or out, whichever one it is, or you won't be able to see the orbit. All right, that'll take care of that. So this shouldn't be too tough now. How does the period change as the radius increases? Just so our answers are all consistent here. As the orbital radius increases, the period... And then fill that out once you get there. Now you're going to look at the graph tab. This is why hopefully you've been hitting record. If you haven't been hitting record, you got to go back and redo it. But when you hit the graph tab, it defaults to period versus orbital radius. So that's good. You have the AUs on the x-axis, the period on the y. And you're going to look for what type of, what type of relationship you're seeing, are you seeing here. So what does it in indicate? In the words of Lentz, is it directly proportional? Is it inversely proportional? Is there no correlation at all? Is it exponential? Remember, you've got a math whiz in front of you, so uh, you guys will be in good hands there. Um, honestly, not too worried about number six, so you can cross that off. Number seven, on the table on the previous page, there were two blank columns there. Okay, two blank columns. You may have already saw that I had them filled out. But you're going to label it A cubed and period squared. A cubed, period squared. And so what you do now, now that you have these numbers, is whatever AU you have here, and you may have to go through this with Miss Klein, but let's say you had a 3 here, just for fun, you probably don't. You would go 3 carat 3. All right, That answer would go here. Whatever you period you have, it's period carrot 2. These two numbers should show something magical. All right. So if you cube this one, you write it here. Square this one, write it there. So when you do that, that takes care of this. Now you just say, what do you notice about those numbers? I have this circled because this is what we're going to put into our notebooks for the third part of the Kepler's Law Notes which talks about the, the orbital radius being proportional to the period, and specifically the cube of the radius is proportional to the planet's period. In fact, they're equal for a constant, which we'll deal with later. And then for the challenge, they're just making sure you got some crunch... Oh, sorry, that did not come out right. Making sure you can crunch some numbers. So, pretty simple. If we know this relationship from up here. We already saw that. We can ignore k in our solar system because in our solar system k equals 1. So if you really wanted to put a 1 in front of that, feel free, but you don't need to. So what we're going to do, you take this 0.39, you carrot 3 it, and you hit enter. So 0.39 carrot 3, hit enter, then take the square root. Be sure you get help running that calculator if you need it. We've done this a lot, so you may not need it. But if you do need it, don't feel bad. Don't get these wrong just because you don't want to ask how to take the square root of something. All right? So you're going to do all of these the same, and then you'll be done with that. And once you're done with this, you're probably going to kick into my next video we are, we're, ugh, where we are going to wrap up the third law in our notebooks. All right. See you in the next one.